belief is a huge factor in uh, you know whether something works for you or it doesn't work for you is it really so unsafe to look at somebody else's opinion is it your self respect that's speaking or is it your ego that's speaking if there is any <laughs> advice you have to give to 20 year old kajol mm -hmm. from all the learnings and awareness that you have today what advice would you give her On my journey of self work I have realized that gratitude is really really important and some of the things that we take for granted play such an important role in your life when i looked at things and people who i had to be grateful for this one person stood out because she held my hand from day 1 of my journey of reinvention and continues to be my comfort zone and I'm so happy to have her with me having fun talking about serious things in a light way or maybe not we don't know how this is going to flow and uh, thank you Kajal for coming <laughs> on to Soul Safar in Hindi Safar the Hindi Safar not the English not the English Safar but basically you just called me Kichdi so I don't know whether that's on this thing you just called me comfort food basically comfort zone what do you call me comfort food Comfort but zone, comfort food is the same thing now. But is comfort you called me dal khichdi basically. I'm not sure whether I want to be on the show anymore. We'll, what is the what is wrong with dal khichdi? I like it. Please. It's cooked in my house tonight. Gee. Okay, we'll put something on the side. <laughs> Have you started this episode by bullying me? Not at all. This is why you're my comfort zone. Because <laughs> you've just broken my defenses. And we made sure that I'm not the serious person talking about... Uh, Never. I don't think that it should be taken. <laughs> Anything should be taken seriously. Not that seriously at least. That's true. That is actually should be the mantra for life. Yeah. We take really. life way too seriously. Literally. I really believe that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, actually I got you here because there's a side of you that nobody really knows of. Really. Because you know, there are lots of sides of me that nobody knows of. Okay, this side of you, <laughs> this one we'll talk about. This one we are talking about, yeah. This okay. one we are talking about. But uh, the serial killer, I'll hide. <laughs> Bury the bodies. <laughs> the one that we dragged last night. Okay, this you can't use, but okay. Um, so I, I, wa I want to know because we talk a lot about you know meditation, healing, or some reading that we've done, you know. Uh, and that's a side that many people may not know, may not know about you. How did you arrive at um, meditation on your journey? Was it because Tanu Aunty was into spirituality or there were some other catalysts that made you turn that way? I'll start by saying that my mom really played a huge part in my, in my journey with, uh, to spirituality. And... Uh, I think one of the basic tenets of spirituality is the fact that it is everybody's personal journey. One person's journey is very different from the other person's journey and um, th there are things that uh, that may suit you that do not suit me, mm. things that I found amazing and you may find ordinary. So yes, my, my, my mother has always taught me that spirituality is, uh, is something that's there. It's not about religion, it's not about God, it's about your relationship with the higher power, always. And uh, my relationship with the higher power has always been um, that of the favorite child. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yes. So I, I believe that God, Goddess, whoever she is, it has her hand on my head and uh, giving me a kick on my butt as and when I need both. I'm protected and I know that for a fact and I, I kind of took it for granted for a long pa part of my life. So yes, like I say, it took me that little bit of time to come to realize, oh my God, I've been doing this all my life and yeah, yeah what a wonderful relationship I have. As far as meditation, as far as understanding 
you know, going, growing up was concerned. I think I came to it much later. Mm. I did. I found the time to kind of work on that aspect of it much later. That's something that we've just done, I have just done all my life, um, whether it was um, knowing that I could do it. I just knew that, you know, whatever, ha if, if I put my 100% in it, I knew for a fact that I would succeed. And just to recognize that you're protected yes. is comfort. Is comfort to recognize that I'm protected, that wherever I go, I'm safe. Yeah. And uh, you know that it, that it's that it's okay wherever I go, whatever I do, I'm taken care of. Yeah. In every which way possible. Yeah. And has so. that been the bouncing board for you whenever you thought you were taking a risk because you knew that you were uh, protected? Something, something, somebody. We are not going to give them a preferred mm -hmm. pronoun. Is taking care of you and looking out for you. What? Yeah, I believe that. I believe that. And as far as risks are concerned, I don't think that I've ever taken a very, very big risk. Right. I haven't really. I've I've always done what I thought was right for me. Hmm. And it may have looked like a risk to yeah. other people, but never to me. I always felt that, okay, this is the correct path for me to take at this point in time. If I'm faced with choice A and choice B, what is, if choice B may give me more pleasure right now, but maybe choice A is the better thing for me to do yeah and uh, that's really the so it's not a risk for me that i've taken you know the, the i just noticed there are some words you use which unconsciously you use them but they 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 fall under the spiritual realm really like when you say right for me you didn't say i do the right thing most people say i did the right thing but you said what's right for me because you've somewhere unlock that understanding inside, inside of you that what is right for me may not be right for you but exactly. this is right for me like that that's how you notice people like when you li really listen to them yeah. that they are practicing and not just listening or preaching or just you know no preaching though i think is just out the window i don't believe in preachers yeah yeah okay. <laughs> so what tell, tell me what, what is meditation according to you? according to you what does it mean I've always been the kind of child, maybe, because I was a reader, who was able to go into my own head and stay there. Mm. Like I could stay there indefinitely for hours and hours and hours and it didn't matter. Hunger, thirst, all these things didn't matter to me. So I could read for like hours and hours and hours without a break. Um, I still have that ability. And now I call it an ability because it's something that, again, that I've been doing forever and to me that when you can be so comfortable with yourself mm. that you allow your mind to just be there's there's no trying to guide it this way no trying to guide it that way no trying to make it something mold it something or call it something I think that for me is meditation right. so like that's that's you're just there and there is no um, there is no anticipation, there is no regret, there is no past, present, nothing. There's just, there's just here, now and that's it. Right. And you're very much in the present moment. I think also it's about being comfortable with silences. You can, once you have become comfortable with silence, you actually get into a meditative space. And yeah. I, I feel that that doesn't mean shunning the noise. No, not at all. How comfortable are you with silences? Because everybody knows a Kajol who just loves to talk, but this side of you. How? I'm actually really super comfortable. I really am. I, in fact, oddly enough, I feel like as I've grown older, um, yes, I can ramble and uh, I tend to when, uh, you know, when I'm speaking to people, etc. But I think I'm very, very comfortable with not saying anything also. I'm quite mm. capable of sitting for like three, four hours in a car journey mm. and not speaking a word right. or or even at um, or even with people for that matter, though, of course, they find it extremely rude if I don't say anything. But <coughs> and I've had that reaction as well. But yeah, I'm really, really comfortable not saying anything and just being like silent. I don't need to. Yeah. I don't feel the need to make conversation anymore. And that's great because sometimes, you know, people try and get validation from the outside by just constantly talking, talking. 
of filling up silences with words and yeah. when you can but i also have to say hmm. that i am very very clever about this because i only spend time with people that i am absolutely comfortable with <laughs> Yeah. So there's a twist to that. Yeah, like we discuss, <laughs> we'll go on a solo trip together yeah. <laughs> and do yeah. our own thing on that trip. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, uh, I also know you are into a lot of. You've tried out mm. a lot of healing modalities. I have. And I have. do you do you feel comfortable to tell me a few of them and if any of them has really resonated with you? I'm really open to quite a few things. I'm open to actually all of it. Okay. I think that there is some. Uh, there is some truth to what people practice and i always believe that uh, belief is a huge factor in um, you know whether something works for you or it doesn't work for you so i've wanted things to work for mm. me very very badly uh, when i wanted to be healed and i wanted something you know i wanted to figure stuff out for myself and i've you know approached people i've approached people with the thought that yes i want to be fixed you know i want this to work so i think that also has a lot to do with you know how it works for you and yeah. on you yeah. it's whether you want it to work also that matters in the long run so yeah i've had i've done a, and i've done quite a lot i've um, i've spoken to animal communicators uh, for my dog and i have uh, <clears throat> i've done some hypnotherapy i've done some theta healing i've done a lot of work for myself mm. I've done some therapy as well, and uh, whenever I'm feeling really, really um, out of it, or I feel like I'm really confused in my life, I think one of the biggest factors is that I sit down and I write, and I sit down and I I just write and start writing about whatever is happening and whatever is like going on, and you know somehow when you when I'm writing it, I try it just kind of figures itself mm. out. Yeah, it just figures itself out, and it's like when you. I don't even I don't even need to go back and read it but when I go back and read it it looks like as though somebody has sat down opposite me and given me an entire explanation as to hmm. you know what has happened here with me right so yeah so so I've done about, that's about it I haven't you've really. done light language healing you know? I, I remember you've done yes. you've spoken to a light language I healer. have I have I've forgotten about that yeah I have I've done a little bit of light language healing that was <coughs> that was okay i didn't really uh, resonate with it that much that was maybe it had a subconscious effect on me but i didn't see a conscious that much of a conscious difference okay so you know the kajal that i know there are two distinct sides to you one is a very logical side which is because i i know you to like if i come to you saying kajal i have a headache and something's not right you you know doctors you you look at logic you are like okay take this medicine take that <coughs> medicine you do that and then there side a side of you which is a believer in alternative therapy as well absolutely so you are like a perfect combination of the two how in your head does is there ever a conversation that that logical mind is saying oh this is bullshit don't don't do this or is there not there at all there is never a conversation because uh this is my firm belief that i think that all our problems start with our mind and when there is something in your mind that is troubling you mm. it starts from there the germ starts from there the bacteria starts from there and then kind of travels all the way through your body to whichever organ is supposed to you know be upset by it huh. and um, and and i really believe that i believe that and i believe that when you figure stuff out for yourself um, it's a, it's a simple example it's so stupid but it's really simple and i'll give you a simple example i, I used to get this really uh, i used to get my neck I used to get really badly stuck my left side and it would keep getting stuck and i couldn't understand why it would keep getting stuck and um, and it was just this like it was every third day that i would wake up with this it would just get stuck just completely frozen and um, i was looking up louise l hay yeah her book yeah, i love yeah. her i love her too, i yeah. love her she's she's amazing so she has her whole book on uh, um, you know what each thing actually means like when you get your neck stuck etc and the first thing it was so simple because uh, what she said was that you're obviously not looking at something uh, you're not looking at the problem you're looking at it the way you want to look at it but you're not looking at it how it really is yes. 
and from somebody else's point of view you're stuck you're stuck in this ego and you're stuck in this belief that your way is the right way and um, whenever my neck would get stuck i would sit down and remind myself of it huh. i would have to sit down and remind myself okay what is it that what is it that you're not looking at is this what you're not looking at okay so what is it is it could it be is it really so unsafe to look at somebody else's opinion mm. is it really so uh, difficult to see somebody else's side is it your ego speaking or is it is it um, is it your logical mind that's speaking is it your self respect that's speaking or is it your ego that's speaking so that's a question that that conversation mm. i had to have my, with myself like about 100 times before I actually my neck pain actually went away huh. but <laughs> so yeah i took a little bit of practice <laughs> the, but sure getting but there yeah i'm fine now i really am fine and of course to be on the uh, the other side of me of course also went to a neck doctor and i asked him <laughs> and i was just like you know so my neck keeps getting stuck so you what do i do so and uh, he was like you know why don't you just try putting the pillow on under your neck when you turn around in bed like i have a tendency to sleep on my side so he's like you know why don't you whenever you sleep on your side your neck needs to be a little higher uh. so whenever you sleep on your side just take a little pillow and put that under your head but how do you realize that when you're sleeping like but how do you wake I, up so you mind? train yourself for that you have to train yourself while you sleep to do that and i've oh. trained myself now and you do that now and i do that now oh well, lovely <coughs> it's a combination of both yeah it's a it's a perfect the point balance is of both that my neck has not got stuck <laughs> after that <laughs> But you know, also when you do self work, yeah, there's a lot of stuff you that comes up. Of like course, you, you come face to face with your core yes. belief patterns, yes. things that that you hide from yourself, which are deeply uncomfortable to mm -hmm. encounter. And these are times when we all find uh, devices or techniques to center ourselves. And it's it, it's it's that one size doesn't fit all. Hmm. So what? is there something that is there something specific that you do to find your center i love to knit i love to read i love to crochet i love listening to music i love working out mm. so i think all these things that i like to do are actually ways to just calm myself wherever whichever <laughs> technique works in that particular situation sometimes it's you know sometimes if i'm very very angry then crochet is not going to work <laughs> let me just tell you that So that needle is not going to feel, you know, <laughs> it's not going to feel. Yeah, it just doesn't have the same push, Puck. pull, stab. That's digging hill. Yeah. <laughs> so I haven't tried gardening yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I meant. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so I feel that that those are the times that I I maybe need to work out. Mm. So it's it depends from. case to case but 90% of the time i like to just sit i need to breathe and i need to maybe knit for like half an hour 45 minutes read a book crochet listen to my music yeah and i have some of your uh, pieces that you've knit for me yes. uh, crocheted for crocheted me at home for and they are like my prized possessions thank you and yeah i i think i'm going to get more of them you will for at sure least, at least i get pictures of everything that you're knitting yes you do <laughs> Oh, uh, you know. Okay, so this is this is why I call you my comfort zone. I had such a fear of showing myself mm. and uh, in front of people, and I remember when I had even started channeling, I was very scared about what people say about me. They'd say you've gone cuckoo and you're you're schizo or whatever, and you were one of the first people that I that I spoke to, and I was I remember that day I. must have said in matter of fact but it was a conversation that i'd had in my head before that i was just like what is she going to say is she going to be like bhav you've lost it what are you doing what is this shit <laughs> but you were so supportive like that's when i was just like okay i think it's safe to come out there in whenever i feel comfortable but it's safe to come out there because people don't think i'm mad because i knew an analytical side of you mm. and that's why i and you don't even realize how you put me at ease sometimes no i don't know <laughs> yeah you don't know <laughs> i have but no idea i remember vaguely i remember vaguely this conversation but i don't know what i said in that i don't know no, what you no, said no 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 you were just like really <laughs> tell me do you want to read something out to me that is what your okay. what your reaction was <laughs> but uh, okay i was going to ask you uh, what went through your head at that point but clearly you don't remember like 
Okay, um, so I think that when I've, again, it has a lot to do with my mother because I think my mom had this uh, uncanny ability about her to be able to accept pretty much everything around her. I don't think she ever gave us a basis for um, any kind of ism. Mm. Whether it was, uh, um, you know, whether it had to do with color, gender, whatever. You know, we never found anything, there was never anything of that right. from her. Yeah, she has principles, she has ethics, she has morals. Like as you say, when you when your children, you learn so much from the pa your parents around you. And I always say the first thing that my mom always gave me is my upbringing was one of the most amazingly forward thinking upbringings. We grew up with the fact that everything was okay. Mm. Everything was a norm. That there are things in this world, there are more things in this world, in, in, in heaven and he hell, Horatio, kind of thing, you know. So I think that that's something that, uh, that and, and I genuinely believe this. I genuinely believe this, that everybody in this world has a right to live to live as and how they please. I and give me the right to live as and how I please. Right. As long as you are not going out and hurting somebody, as long as you are not going out and maliciously, you know, doing something horrible or, you know, uh, becoming a serial killer or something like that. <laughs> in that case, I think, yeah, it's yeah. fine. Whether, um, you know, whatever you choose to do and choose to be. Yeah. It's really, it's really okay. Yeah, it's amazing you talk about your mum, because uh, you are a mum, mother yourself. Yeah. And I want to ask you, from all the learnings and all the knowledge and all the experiences that you've gathered, do you feel the need to pass it on to your children, or would you want them to arrive at it themselves? What is your take on it? I think I want them to understand the modalities that are there, and I'm very open about it. I am very open about it. So I have spoken to my children about doing this and doing that and light language and I have spoken to them about theta healing and I have spoken to them and I haven't spoken to them that, oh, you should try this. No. Mm. I've been like, I'm going for this. It's really helped me and this has been my experience and whatever, whatever. I want them to understand. I want them to see what is there and understand again what is normal. Right. That it's all out there and it's all it's all things that, these are all the things that are available to you. If and when life takes you down that road, you should know yeah. that it is a very, very, it's not an abnormal thing. It's nothing to shy away from. It's nothing to be scared of yeah. either. It's really nothing to fear. And um, there's, you know, go ahead and try it. I mean, you can try skydiving, which to my way of thinking is the most idiotic thing that was ever created. <laughs> Or bungee jumping for that matter. I mean, why would you pay somebody to throw you off a cliff? <laughs> yeah. Ask me. <laughs> Ask I'll do it for free. You won't even have to pay me. There'll be no rope. Yeah. There'll be no rope. Simple. <laughs> what seems like a healthy pattern here that you've got from your mother and you're passing on to your children is there is no installation of fear. She no. taught you to be fearless and yes. you're teaching your children to be fearless. So one of the first things actually that I did with my, my daughter was, uh, mm. so if she wanted to climb on a staircase or if she wanted to jump from the staircase, she'd be like, Mama, I'm going to jump, I'm going to jump. I would be like, okay, baby, I'm here. Go, jump. Yeah. And I stopped myself from fearing that. Yeah. From expecting the worst. That was the one of the first things and I and I'm telling you, trust me when I say this, that I really had to concentrate, I really had to work so hard at, you know, stopping myself. No. Mm. You're okay, Nissa, come on, go ahead. Mm. Walk down those stairs, baby. Come on. Jump from there. You want to jump from there, na? Jump. I'm here. I'm standing here to catch you. And uh, and it made such a difference. Yeah. And both my children today, they're not they're not uh, touch wood, they're not the kind who will are scared of, you know, trying something new or wanting to do something different. You know, they're like, okay, mm. mom's got our backs. Yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah, I've got your back. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Do whatever you want to do. You know what this sounds like in my head and which is, I don't think you realize it, 
but I'm going to come out there and tell you is there are people who talk about spirituality, talk about allowance, talk about not being, uh, not being scared, and then there are people who practice it in day-to-day -day life. They apply it. There's an application. What you're telling me sounds like application of everything that people are doing buck buck about, <laughs> and it's it's really it's. This is what spirituality is. This exactly. is what self work is. It's not just about sitting in a meditative pose and with agarbattis and candles around you. Absolutely. It's about applying what, what you have learning. arrived at. Exactly. Yeah, and that's commendable. I'm not just saying this because you're my friend. Thank you. I so much. truly, truly, truly believe it. And the yeah, check is in the mail. Sorry? The check is in the mail. Oh, has it been deposited in my bank? <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> um, we'll share the profits. <laughs> If there are any, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if there is any advice you have to give to 20 year old Kajol mm -hmm. from all the learnings and awareness that you have today, what advice would you give her? I wouldn't give her any advice. I wouldn't mm. because that 20 year old, if she hadn't done what she did when she was 20, yeah. I wouldn't be where I am today. Yeah. And um, I wouldn't be who I am today either. Yeah. I wouldn't know all the things that she taught me. Yeah. She taught me a lot. And uh, you know, she continues to teach me. I lost her there in the middle for a bit. And uh, I've just found her again. I found her last year, back again. So yeah, I met her again and she's amazing. So yeah, I, I don't want to be her again. But yeah, there are parts of her that I want to rediscover and hone mm. into parts of me as well and make better, hopefully. And talking about today, I see, of course, from the outside, people see you as this powerful, fierce woman. But I see how you rediscover your power every single day. And I, I see it. I see your growth. And I see, you know, when you are rediscovering your power, sometimes we we go off center, we struggle. But I see you find your center. And I and I feel like, I don't know, I feel like a parent right now saying <laughs> that I'm proud of you. But I do. Thank I you. How does Thank it, you. How Thank does you it so feel much. Rediscover, rediscovering your power? It feels amazing. It really feels amazing. It feels like it feels like growth yeah. and uh, I didn't think that growth could take so long <laughs> but it takes its own time yeah. and uh, it feels freeing actually. It feels liberating to know uh, what that your capabilities are much beyond your imagination or what your imagination was earlier at least. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's part of it and uh, every day is a new day. Every Instagram post is a new, new. post. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and talking about power, if you had to think about one word, what is your power? I would like to believe that my power today is my belief in myself. Mm. That's all I need. You know, I've said this to you before, and can I tell you what I think your power is? Mm. The ability to give unlimited love. You just love with such an open heart. And I've been at the receiving end of it. I've seen people who've been at the receiving end of it. And I think that's, that's one of your strongest suits. That's your power, because there are very few people who can give love the way you give love. Thank and that's, yeah. That and is vice versa. Yeah. I can't tell you, but I'll take this occasion to say that if I have helped you and if I've been your dal khichdi, you've been my keema kebab. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds wrong. Yeah. Okay, forget it. Bread and butter. Okay. Peanut butter? Peanut, <laughs> peanut, butter, peanut butter? Peanut butter. Peanut butter. We'll call it peanut butter and leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the weirdest friends ever. Yeah. But, yeah. but, um, but peanut butter and dal khichdi, what mm, a pair. Yum. <laughs> no. We're not going to try it. No, we're not going to try it. <laughs> but uh, I also know you're, you spoke about Louis Hay. Yes. And I know you're into affirmations. Mm -hmm. And if I have to ask you to think of an affirmation that 
you can think of in this moment that created magic in your life what's what's that affirmation i think the one affirmation that it took me very long to believe also for mm. that matter uh, i kept saying it to myself in the hopes that i would start believing it instantly but it took me like a good two weeks of saying it again and again and again to myself to make me believe it but it had again a huge effect on me was that um, i release all the baggage that does not serve me anymore and is not mine yeah that's it it's just that simple but it took me because there was a lot of ego involved over there with that affirmation mm. there was a lot of uh pride involved with it there was a lot of attachment and uh yeah so that that affirmation took the mickey out of me but it worked yeah. you also it told worked. me once that every night you say this one one uh mm. sentence and uh, i started saying it yeah. and it's made a huge difference in my life but i i want you to tell the audience what is that one thing that you say because it's for me i know i've applied it and it's life changing so it goes like it is life changing i believe that as well it's quite a it's is you know it's more of a reminder to yourself as well as to that you matter and uh, it's i call all my powers back to me that i have given unknowingly or knowingly i call everything back to me and return all the power that everybody else uh, that i have taken from anybody else as well yeah yeah and in that statement you don't only honor yourself but you're honoring the opposite person yes and we can keep talking because we keep going <laughs> on and on we have we'll go all around the world and come back but at on a parting note the only thing i will tell you and i think that's the most important thing that i want to tell you i I've, i've told you this many times before but i'm going to say it on camera is i truly truly love you and love you too. and you should never feel the need to thank me for my love ever but i also think that part of it is accepting a thank you with gratitude fine didn't we start the show with gratitude and accepting yes okay fine <laughs> can you be good to me while we do our closing <laughs> but thank you thank you so much kajal not just for coming on uh, this show but for everything that you do for me thank you so much thank you in return Yeah, thank you. Vice versa. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call the show thank you. Thank you. Thank you with bhav. Yeah, thank you with bhav. <laughs> Do remember that the affirmations we discussed on this episode are not prescriptive. And be very mindful when you craft an affirmation for yourself. Because affirmations are like diets. What may work for one person may not work for the other.